Hello, this is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about the Noble Active Implant. Now today we're going to be talking about how to make a temporary abutment screw retained crown on an internally hexed implant. So stay tuned, we're going to show you how this is done. There's some great tips for you to use in your practice. Now the patient originally came with a broken off tooth. So an implant was placed immediately in the lateral position. You can see the nice position of this uh, particular implant. So what we wanted to do was to preserve papilla and also to stop the patient from having to wear an immediate uh, type of partial. And so anyway, the patient decided on this immediate placement of the temporary end crown. So the temporary cylinder was actually placed on the tooth. And here we are doing this. You can see that uh, we're rotating this down into the hex. We want to engage the hex and make sure that this temporary cylinder is in that hex before we proceed with the next step. So we take an x-ray to confirm that this is actually the case. And we can see that the cylinder is fully seated. Now once this is fully seated, we're able to go on to the next step, which is to start to make the temporary crown. So one of the things we want to do is to have some type of shape to create the temporary crown. So we're going to use, in this case, a clear stent of the wax up that we originally made. So we created this and so this fits over top of the cylinder. You can sometimes the cylinder will fit, fit through it depending on the depth of the implant but what we want to do is make a hole for this to come through. We want to make it so that we can access the screw hole. Now once this hole is cut and we confirm that we are able to put something in that hole then we're able to move on to the next step. And The next step is going to be involving uh, getting something to fill that hole prior to having the temporary abutment shaped and modified. So what I use in this case is a, a long, low, slow speed burr and cut that in half. And so here I am doing that and I cut it in half and it fits actually quite nicely into the titanium abutment. So this little plug acts to stop the resin from going up into the screw area and then we can take this on and off. So as you can see, what we'll do is place this little pin now, which is actually the burr handle, in, and then we'll place the stent over top of it. So we're now able to modify this by adding some resin in the area and do our pickup. So we want to try this in a few times to make sure it's not impinging on any areas. And so as we go and put the Luxatemp provisional material, the provisional resin in, then we're going to be sliding this over. So we want to make sure that this is not going to be impinging when we do this. So we put in about three quarters full so that we're not going to be putting it up into the socket area. Because we'll be able to modify the socket area out of the mouth rather than having free resin up inside of the uh, fresh wound. So as we do this, we wipe off the excess resin and then we start to let that set. So this uh, keeps it out of the socket keeps it kind of curing around that cylinder and makes a, a nice pickup of the incisal edge and the kind of facial aspect of the tooth around the implant. Now once the resin is set we're able to take off the plastic stent so that we're able to get at the actual crown assembly itself. Now our goal is to take out this pin and it's just kind of friction fit inside so we're going to kind of wiggle it out with a hemostat so that we're able to get back at that cylinder and at the screw. Now we take our Unigrip driver going inside we want to just uh, take that screw back out. And we know that when we take this out the whole cylinder and the screw are going to come out with this because the screw is kind of actually locked inside of the cylinder based on the anatomy of the screw cylinder itself. So we start to build up some flowable resin using Luxatemp flowable resin from Zenith and we start to build it up and like cure it so we're creating an emergence profile you want to create an emergence profile that's very similar to what the shape of the root anatomy is so that it's going to support the papilla and make this uh, a nice result for the patient so we're able to build this down to the, the top of the cylinder which is just over the hex there's actually a margin area so you're able to see where you want to build this down so the beauty of this is it's all done outside of the mouth. So none of this is done 
in the mouth where the resin could ha possibly harm the patient. So as we smooth this down, we're going to kind of shape it and kind of get an idea for what we want to accomplish with the crown fitting up inside to support the papilla. We want to create the emergence coming from the actual implant out to the full anatomy. So we're going to polish it with some discs and make it smooth and get it so that it's not going to be too problematic for the patient. But I like to use a little bit of clear bond and sometimes some stain just to make it so that the tooth is going to look nice and match up with the other teeth in the area. So I use a little replica to do this. So I take a replica and then screw the uh, implant crown down on top. So once it's all finished, we take it to the mouth and we actually have to line up the abutment the same way you'd line up the final crown. So it's going to be screw retained and fit inside. So as you see here in slow motion, we're actually going to take the crown, insert it till we find that hex. We're able to confirm this with uh, the anatomy, with the, the occlusion, making sure that that's sitting in properly, and then we tighten it down. If you feel uncomfortable about this, you're more than welcome to take an x-ray and confirm the seating of that, but usually you can confirm this by the seating of the particular implant in assembly over the occlusion as it sat from the original because we've done the wax up. So in the x-ray you can see that uh, it's actually sitting down quite nicely. The cylinder is um, where we want it to be. So once we torque this down to 15, you can actually go up to 35 if you want to. I like to stay it at 15 because uh, we're actually dealing with an implant that is torquing up to about 70 newtons. So really there's no problem if you wanted to go up to 35. So we take some retraction cord and place it inside of the, the uh, canal area of the implant cylinder. And I do this instead of cotton because it's a little bit easier to come and take out later on. So we place this cord in and then we're going to put some resin in behind this. So you kind of just tuck the cord up inside and that will prevent resin from going into the screw because we don't want the resin, uh, the flowable resin to get into that screw and then not be able to get this temporary crown off. Now our goal is to try to make this actually a screw retained crown. We're a little bit in size on this case, but we're probably going to be able to sneak this into a screw retained crown later on. So we do place some resin in, making sure it doesn't uh, impinge into the screw area at all. We're just kind of sealing it off and then it's going to be uh, stable until the patient comes back. And usually this is going to be about three to four months later after the implant has been fully integrated. We want to make sure this is a non-functional loaded implant, so that means no contact, no working, no non-working. We kind of make this shorter than the other teeth so that it's not going to affect the occlusion. So once the crown is on, then we're able to come back and actually do a crown removal. So one of the ways I like to do this is to take the original stent, put the stent on, and this is going to show you where that original hole was that you actually went into the abutment. So it guides us to be in the exact position that we need to be in. So what we'll do is just basically go in with a, a diamond burr. I'm using an 8850KR diamond, red stripe diamond. Go in and we'll find that cylinder. And once we find the cylinder, then we know that we were able to use a headstrom file. This headstrom file likes to grab onto anything, so we're able to pull stuff out. So you can see we can pull out that cord quite easily. Now once the cord is out, you're able to remove the temporary crown and get back in there and start to do your impression technique. So it works quite well and you can see here's an x-ray showing the impression coping on top. So this was a YouTube video showing how to make an immediate screw retained temporary crown using a temporary abutment, this uh, titanium cylinder. I hope you're able to use this in your practice. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry.